I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my Animal Education Series. Today we're with Jake at the Indianapolis Zoo. Oh, hey, so where are we? Uh, so we are at the Indianapolis Zoo, like you said, and we are in our deserts biome. And so in this nice big glass dome, it is a lovely 84 degrees year round. It's perfect for reptiles and all sorts of bug critters that we've got in here. So, like, kind of how is all this? How is all this set up? Um, so this whole place was built in, in 1989, I believe, and so they built this nice huge glass dome to let light through to keep it nice and bright. They built all this awesome uh, rock work around to encourage small lizards to climb around. So we have a few free roaming lizards that you kind of check around as you look up in the uh, rock work. Um, and we have these nice exhibits played out so that we can kind of uh, show different areas. So like right here, we've got kind of a um, not really an African exhibit, but it's kind of that way. And then we've got some larger species and some larger exhibits. And so we kind of vary it by size of the animals and where they're from. Well, that's super cool. So let's get started with the animals. Yes. Have down here. So speaking of our African area exhibit, we have some brand new uh, Egyptian tortoises. Um, now that tiny little tortoise is about as big as it's going to get. These are the second smallest species of tortoise in the world. Um, so they're very, very, uh, they're very small, but they're also very uh, endangered and protected. So we're trying to get some of these guys in to show conservation and kind of tell their story. So. And over here we have some pretty cool lizards. Yeah, so we got some neat lizards down here too. Um, so sitting up on our rock here, this is a Mala Euromastix. Um, so they're from Northern Africa. I mean, a nice big yawn there. So this rock is heated, so he spends a lot of his time just hitting, hanging out right there. Now, right next to him down here, this is a rhinoceros iguana. These guys aren't from Africa, they're from uh, Haiti. Uh, but we throw her in here because it's a nice size exhibit for her to uh, be in. And I love to stick uh, Cyclora iguanas in any exhibit I can because they're the coolest lizards. Um, and then over here, we've got a little uh, great plated lizard also from Africa. What plants are these here? Um, so these green plants, um, these are what are called snake plants, our mother in law's tongue. Um, they're from the Santa Maria family. Um, all the plants that we've got in here are taken care of by our uh, horticulture department, and so they do a really cool job of kind of do some research and decide, all right, these plants are from this area, so we're going to stick them in here. And these plants are from this area, so we're going to stick them in here. Um, and so our, we got a guy that comes in, takes care of all of them for us, and uh, does a really good job. Now over here, we have a nice, large open space. We have a very large open space, yes. Um, what do we find here? Um, so let's see if we can find him here. Uh, so right in the back, you can see this is Bob. Uh, Bob is a Grand Cayman Blue Iguana. They're from Grand Cayman. Um, we are part of a, a breeding program to actually breed these guys. Um, and so we've got a couple pairs set up that hopefully we're going to get some babies here sometime very soon. Let's see if we have um, our radiated back here. We do have our one radiated. So this is our one of our males that we've got. Um, we actually just had him together with our females. We're trying to breed these guys right now. Um, and so we have three females that we paired him up with, and uh, we've had him there for a couple weeks, and we're going to take him out for a couple weeks, and then we'll put him back together just to kind of re-excite him, hopefully uh, give him a little bit more enthusiastic about trying to breed and hopefully have some eggs here by the end of the year. So, What do we have over here? Um, so in this exhibit, it's kind of a smaller exhibit, but we've got a uh, desert tortoise down here, kind of hiding in the back. Um, and then over to your left, you have another plated lizard. This is one of our female plated lizards. Um, so we just have one. Sometimes we can bring them, but um, right now she's just hanging out. Um, and then right next, I don't know if you can find him here. He's going to probably be hiding. If you stick the camera right down in there, you can see that's a Colorado River toad. Um, and so he, uh, we built him all these really nice hides in the cubby places, and he decided, nope, I'm going to take my own. And so he's got himself buried under the rock now. I have that at my house. I mean, all these nice hides and places that they can go into, and they just destroy everything that they can Pretty much how it goes. That's how they want to do That's how they do Yes. Now, speaking of destructive, we have our awesome meerkat mob. So, you can see them. They're all dinging around right now. Um, since this is a desert dome, we have our some desert mammals in here as well. Um, now, meerkats are cool because they have a really slow metabolism that allows them to live in these really hot environments. And so if they were actually to be outside and it was like 60 degrees, it'd actually be very harmful for them. But in here, like I said, it's 84 degrees year-round, so they're just fine in this nice hot heat. 
Now we're gonna move on over here. So we've got a big exhibit or a big last exhibit. Okay, watch your head. Uh, you're good. You're good with rocks. Yep, you're good. All right. So right over here is our last big exhibit. And we have some more radiated tortoises in here. This is where we actually keep all of our females. Um, and they. There's about one female right there, and our other female is hiding someplace. Okay, there's, oh, she's right back here, she's about to move. So she's right there, and then this is our other male, uh, Grand Cayman Blue Iguana. So he's a little bit smaller than Big Bob over there, uh, but he's also a lot younger, and so we're kind of getting him a little bit bigger. Um, but well, we like his size right now because he's not super large, and so he can uh, breed with the females pretty easily. Uh, big males tend to have a little bit females. So through this way is our snake exhibit. So attached to our big desert dome, we've got a big snake hallway that we then um, have snakes from all over the world. They're not necessarily uh, restricted to just the desert biome. Um, so uh, we've got things like rattlesnakes and uh, just cobra, some cobra species or eight cobra species and we've got like the moon vipers and things like that. Um, but we have, it's kind of dark back here, but if you can kind of see in here, we've got you know, timber rattlesnakes, um, so anything through, uh, so you just got the human monsters, and so um, it's a really nice variety of things to, for people to see and look at, because it's not just specifically set up for desert biomes, so we've got some cool rainforest and things too. So now we are in a brighter part of the snake hall, so what are some of the snakes that we have here? Um, so one of the species that we've got, we've got a spotted python from Australia. Um, we've got a few of these guys here, and this one just sheds. You can see how there's shed pieces all over. They don't really shed nicely like a you know, tube sock like some snakes do. They just kind of explode out of their, their scale, so it always is kind of a bit of a mess. Um, and then down here we've got Taylor's cantiles. Um, these guys are very closely related to uh, copperheads and cottonmouths, but they're from kind of Mexico and Central America. Um, now one of our fun snakes that we've got here are the Eastern Massasagas. These are actually native species to Indiana and they are, their range is slowly leaving Indiana and so we're trying to uh, breed these guys to kind of increase the populations and things like that. Um, now we've got garter snakes, um, just something that we like to have here just so people can see it and know, okay, this is what a garter snake looks like. And so if I see one of these out in my backyard, I know it's not going to be big and scary and dangerous. It's just something that's good to have around. They eat mice and they eat worms. So it's something that's a garter positive. snake. They're adorable. And they, exactly right. Um, now we've got green, tri uh, green tree pythons. Um, this is his favorite spot. <laughs> so he's here. Um, we don't, you know, he moved because he uh, ate his mouse yesterday, so we know he's good. Um, and now in this last tank, we actually have uh, baby chuck wallas. We had baby chuck wallas born here last year at the zoo, um, and so we put them out here for everybody to see because they are tiny and adorable. Um, now they are starting to get a little fat and large, and so we're probably gonna have to move them out of that exhibit here very shortly. But um, so they're they're still just as amazing and cool. It's pretty cool right here. So we got a lot of the same. This is another cantil. Um, we've got another, our other Egyptian tortoise. This is actually our first Egyptian tortoise that we got, and uh, because we got her, we're like, oh, we have to have more now. And so we had those other two that were uh, out in the dome, so eventually she'll join those two. Um, my favorite snake, the rosy boa. I don't know why I like them, they're just the coolest. And so this is a uh, 24 year old rosy boa, and so she's up wow. there. She's very old, but she is still super healthy, still eating, and still enjoying life. And so we give her lots of fun things to climb on, and so we built that exhibit for her. See, we have another spotted python. Another spotted python. Like I said, we've got a few doubles right now, um, just filling out space until we expand our collection a little bit more. Um, now we have a great banded king snake. Um, up here, so these guys are also from kind of the southern United States. Um, they have that same kind of banding that you would think of like a um, milk snake would have. So they have that kind of um, coloration, that pattern to make them look like they're dangerous, but they're really not. Yeah. And then, so this is actually, uh, so the two moss sagas that we have here, we'll eventually put them together. This is our breeding pair, and so this is our male, and the one over on the other side was our female. Hopefully we're gonna get them together here at the end of this year, have them cool down, and then we'll have some babies in the spring. So that's the plan. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, me too. Alright, so the last part of our exhibit or kind of the dome here is our pond area. Um, so you can see we've got this really cool waterfall feature. Um, and so we just added a bunch of these really cool aquatic plants in to kind of uh, help the water, help the stream, and make it look really cool and pretty. So we have these really neat uh, water lilies, and then we've got some uh, this feathery, loopy stuff is actually papyrus. 
And uh, so we're trying to get that to really grow. It's already got a little nose and uh, deep growth on it. So hopefully that's going to take over and explode and fill up that area. I see the lily pads up there. The lily pads are loving it too. Um, now off to this side, we've got three uh, snake egg turtles. And so we got one that's sitting out nice and over for you guys right now. Um, and this green plant is also a different kind of papyrus plant. You can see how the convention explodes and expands out. Um, there it goes back into the water. Yep. And she sees us and she sees anybody and she thinks, oh, it's food time. All right, we're going to come over here and check you out. So, there's another one right there. Yeah, so there's three of them in there. Uh, sometimes they're uh, fun to find, but a lot of times they'll just come right up to us and say, okay, you go one, two, three, found you all. <laughs> no. So what's your favorite part about this dome? Uh, I like the diversity. We do have a lot of really cool things. We've got stuff from Egypt, we've got stuff from Central America, Caribbean, South, like there's from all over it. So we've got this really cool, diverse collection. Um, and so it's really neat to work for those different things. And then think about, all right, well, this animal is from this place. Let's try and set up an exhibit that looks like that place. So it's kind of fun. And it does look extremely natural. It's like you took it right out of nature and popped it right that was the goal, so we've done a really good job here. And I keep seeing bearded dragon on the side over there and right here. Yeah. Are those some of the kind of free wandering Yes, yeah, so we've got two of them in here right now. I'm trying to find her. Um, she's up in the rock work someplace. We've got chuckwallas in here also that are free roaming. They're going to be up and around here. Um, so we'll we'll put some food out here this afternoon and we'll probably find her then. So. I've been trying to look, but I have my glasses off, so I can't. Sure. I'm gonna try. Yeah. Yeah, so there's stuff that you can see a sign of, okay, well, maybe it's one of these things, and then you look at it and go, oh, okay, you're right there, gotcha. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking about the dome. We've got all the animals and the environments here. Yeah, no problem. Really cool. I didn't know all that. Glad I could help. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Shirt. As always, I'll see you next week.